Have you ever had the experience of feeling overwhelmed, tired, in need of a day off? And then you proceed to take that day off and you promise yourself that you will do nothing all day. You will just rest. And by the end of the day, you look at yourself and you ask yourself, well, what did I do all day? Nothing. I didn't do anything. And somehow you find that you are more tired than before the day off. It's interesting that the Gospel reading for today speaks about the gift of rest. Come to me, says the Lord, and I will give you rest. And so if this is what Jesus says, it must be true, that if we want rest, we have to recognize that rest is a gift that is given to us. It is not something that we do for ourselves. Rest has to be offered to us. Jesus says, I will give you rest. A pure gift from God, like all the other gifts, the gift of peace, I give unto you, Jesus says, shalom. The gift of love, the gift of faith, the gift of hope, and the gift of rest. What is the challenge for all of us? I know for me, the challenge is that I often look at my own Christian life as a kind of gift to God that I'm going to manufacture faith and hope and trust and love and rest, and then I will give those as a gift to God. But I think the reality, based on what we read in sacred scripture, is quite the opposite. The minute we think that we can give something to God, is when we miss the whole point. What is the whole idea of prayer? You know, this is one of the principal questions people have. What is prayer? How do we pray? How do we engage with God? And prayer really is more about being open to receive something that is to be given to us than to give something to God. Prayer is more about being still and silent in the presence of the one who encounters us than being busy and speaking much, hoping to encounter him. The gifts that God offers us, all the gifts that we desire in life, are simply that. They are gifts from God. And ultimately, all we have to do is do what Jesus says. Come to me, and I will give you rest. For I am gentle and humble in heart, so learn from me. When we come to the Lord Jesus in prayer, in the study of his sacred word, in the marvel of the beautiful gifts that surround us, when we begin to notice the very presence of God, then our lessons in life begin. Learn from me, Jesus says, for I am gentle, and humble in heart. The gentleness and humility of Jesus were foretold 
as we heard in the first reading today, even in the Old Testament. What was going to be the sign of a different kind of king, a different kind of leader? The sign would be that he would be victorious even as he is gentle and humble. So often we think that the only way for us to accomplish anything in this world, in our individual lives, is to be the opposite of gentle and humble. But Jesus is the king who is both victorious, which means he has accomplished everything while maintaining his gentleness and humility. And he says to us, you must learn from me to be gentle and humble in heart. So often I think we make our Christian faith too complicated. I make it too complicated. Imagine what our life would be like if we simply tried to be gentle and humble in heart like Jesus, to forgive readily, to excuse easily, to go out of our way, to simply be kind to the unkind. What a beautiful gift we would receive what would we have if we lived a life of gentleness and humility, not just towards those who are gentle and humble towards us, that's easy, but towards everyone? The gift we will receive in living gentleness and humility is the gift of rest, which is another word for peace. Come to me and I will give you peace. I will give you rest. Be gentle and humble in heart like me. Everything else will follow. So my dear friends, the message for today, at least for me, is a very simple and yet the most profound message that Jesus offers us, mainly because it's so simple. It is given in the midst of a journey that Jesus had where he was frustrated by everyone around him. The 11th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew is a chapter of complaints. Jesus says, you are as bad as Sodom and Gomorrah. You don't even listen. You don't want to follow me. In the midst of all the complaints, there is this phrase of Jesus where he chooses to look at the positive. Even in the midst of all the famous and important people who are rejecting him, instead of saying, how bad is my life, O oh Father, why is ever instead of complaining, Jesus says a prayer of thanksgiving. He says, Lord God, I thank you that you have hidden all of these truths from the wise and the intelligent and have given them to infants. Even in the darkest moment of rejection, in other words, Jesus sees the light. He remains positive. He remains gentle and humble in heart. He remains filled with peace. And may that also be the gift we receive from the Lord Jesus, who continues to invite us into his peace. Amen?